In this video, we're spending four days in Tuscany, central Italy, starting and ending here in Pisa. Tomorrow, we're visiting Florence, and on the third day, going to a lesser known city in Tuscany. So come along with us as we'll take you on this little journey. We'll show you the main attractions, what to do, and share our thoughts and experiences along the way. Good and bad. <laughs> Let's check it out. So welcome to Italy. We are spending a few days here in the north of Italy, the Tuscany region, and today we're in Pisa. And in the morning of the first day in Pisa, what do you have to do? We're going to see the Leaning Tower of Pisa behind us. <laughs> so far off. <laughs> So as expected, this complex is super, super busy, touristy, and of course we couldn't find a time slot for climbing the tower, so we're gonna come back at three. We bought our two tickets to climb the tower and walk around the cathedral, which was 20 euros each. So we're gonna go explore botanical gardens and uh, come back here in a bit. Woo, and maybe get a gelato. Of course. <laughs> 30 seconds outside of the tower the TED market. <laughs> so we are already making our way back to the hotel after half an hour. Have to take a quick detour from the gardens because Emma's shoes aren't doing too good. So we're going to go change to some trainers because we're going to do a lot of walking today. So we're only 10 minutes from the hotel. So pop back and then go check out the gardens. Yep, sounds good. So we're back out on our way to Botanical Gardens and I'm surprised it even took us this long, but this is Emma's weakness. <laughs> the gelato sign so let's go see what she's picked good mm, yummy first gelato of the trip Jeez. so we decided to stop for a few minutes in the cafe where we bought this gelato this is baking hot out and we're already a bit tired we're gonna go find the entrance to the botanical gardens yeah and have a little wander around seems really beautiful from the outside so we just want to see it from the inside now okay. wandering around the botanical gardens while we have a bit of time to kill before our walk up Pisa Tower which is quite nice here lots of different plant varieties and stuff only four euros per person to get in so we're gonna head for some lunch yep time for food so we just had lunch at a little cafe in the shade which was really nice we got two massive sandwiches and a coffee and a cold drink. It was about 21 euros, so not too bad. Feeling really stuffed now, and uh, it's not like we've got 300 stairs for the <laughs> Leaning Tower of Pisa. So we're walking back, gonna check out the cathedral. We've got about half an hour before our slots. You have to pre-book a time slot. We arrived about 10 and there wasn't any slots available before one. So if you wanna walk up the actual tower, you highly suggest you should book in advance or at least get here early and plan to come back later in the afternoon like us. So we're waiting in line to go in this big old tower behind me, but apparently there's no backpacks up there. So I need to go check my backpack into the cloakroom while we're waiting in line. So I'm gonna hurry up and do that. It's almost three. It's 
dark in there. Yeah. <laughs> A little over 290 steps to go. We're about seven down. Little viewpoint, number one. These stairs are well worn, you can feel dents in them. You do the banister. Yeah, where's the lift? There's only two ways to change starting to really feel wonky. Yeah, I'm not really yeah. You're walking in a spiral, but you really feel like you're walking. <laughs> Pretty funky. The views are getting good though, so it must be getting high. Yeah. <sighs> we are approaching the top. 293 steps. Wow, it's so tilted. Whew. Getting vertigo. Oh. It's so tilted. Oh. That's why they call it the Straight Tower of Pisa. <laughs> so it's not quite the very top, but it's as far as you can walk up, I reckon. Yeah. Pretty good view. Should we walk around? Yeah. Whew. It's like you're walking in a weird spiral. It feels really weird. Yeah, it is weird. It's like going down now. This is the part that's tilted most away. So apparently where we're standing right now is five meters over from where the base of this side is. Whew. Okay, it does feel, it does feel quite strange. Yeah. Let me show you straight down. That is pretty trippy. You can even see some people are not liking it, right? Yeah. They feel a bit safer in the middle. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on to the bars like it make a difference. Now this is the final staircase to get right to the top level. One way. Why does why does this one go the other way up? I don't know why it's slipping. Yeah, it's kind of slippery. Look at these stairs. I think the view is going to be even more amazing. It's pretty busy up here. There's the bell. Yeah, really cool. The real top of the tower. So this is really it, the top of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Check off the bucket list, yep. what do you think? Yeah, it's got a beautiful view and it's a bit breezy, which is nice because it's so hot down there. It's really hot. Yeah, it's amazing and they've got these massive bells as well. You're not allowed to walk under them or you'll die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bit sketchy to walk up and a few people were clearly not enjoying it too much, but what do you think, it's worth 20 euros? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I reckon so too. you got to do it if you come to Pisa, so one for the bucket list. Great views too. It's not so easy to pass two people on these stairs. It's definitely a bit slippy. Isn't it? Feeling pretty exhausted now, but now we're heading south of the river back towards the airport. That's where some of the shopping is. I think um, we were trying to pack light for the trip, but I accidentally packed way too light by forgetting to bring any underwear or socks. So um, now I need to do a, a shopping trip to buy some underwear. So we're gonna go Check it out, only a 10 minutes or so walk from the Tower of Pisa. Pretty exhausted, but at least we've got a bit of shade here. Feeling that heat. Yeah, might need another gelato. <laughs> Second of the day, that's what we planned. <laughs> <laughs> it was meant to be. Keep on walking. 250. What was the one that we got? 150. Uh-huh, and what were some of the tourist prices for the ones? Like four. Yeah, for four small. euros right next to the Tower of Pisa. We were passing a lot of cute streets on the way, so we've definitely got to come back and visit. It's really nice, we've missed that kind of European architecture and there's just good vibes. Obviously it's pretty hot, but um, it's been nice weather. And uh, yeah, just really enjoyable to walking around. We've done, I think, about 12,000 steps so far. <laughs> God, that's bright and a lot of walking. We didn't rest the most, but uh, it's been nice. We're just about to cross the river. Little bridge. Do we know what river it is or are we that ignorant? Um. Pisa River. River Italy. Riviera. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know in the comments if you've got a better geography of Italy than us. So we managed to do all the shopping that we meant to do. Got some underwear for me and then we've got a new bag. And we're just sitting in a cafe to have a little coffee and juice now. And then we're going to try and explore to get the bus back to our hotel because we've done so much walking today. Need to take a bit of a break. Oh, that's nice. It's good? Yeah. Yummy. 
So we are super exhausted from walking so much a day. We've done about 15,000 steps and we've ended up here back at Central train station, which we need to be back at tomorrow morning early for a train to uh, Florence. So we decided we're gonna try and get the bus back because that might be how we're gonna get here to the train station tomorrow. So let's try and get some tickets, see how easy it is to get around. Well, we hope that's right. There you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tickets. We're walking around quite aimlessly trying to find station seven for the bus. Are we choosing this bus? Yeah. <laughs> Looking lovely for dinner. We're going somewhere really close because we're feeling pretty shattered and we're up early in the morning for our next destination. So we're gonna find a nice local pizza pasta place. Yep, I'm looking forward to some pasta. Yeah, some authentic Italian food. It's some of our favorite cuisine. Yeah. So we're really looking forward to having it in country. How is it? Mm. The whole dinner came to about 35 euros, so it was a decent price for a pretty nice meal. Morning. <laughs> Let's go to Florence. <laughs> So we arrived at Pisa Central Station. We took a bus from our hotel, which was quite easy. We downloaded the app and bought our tickets online, which was great, which was easy. We're half an hour early for our train. We also bought the train tickets online using the trainline.com, which was easy. So we're about to go check out our platform. Ooh, <laughs> Italian train. Here we go. Here we go to Florence. On the way. Yeah. We're going to see hopping on the train because there were some weird drunk guys that were shaving next to us on the train. Let's check out two stories on the train. Is this more comfortable? Yeah. With less shaving. This cathedral is so oh my god. Is that a separate line? So we aborted our mission to the cathedral because the queue for the free entrance was literally so long, probably over an hour waiting. So instead we decided to walk around the corner to go to some kind of plaza to check that out instead. Hopefully we can go back to the cathedral later when there's a bit less for queue because it seems like a bit of a waste of time of our time here in Florence to spend an hour just standing in the sun in the queue. So we stopped at a cafe just behind me there in another plaza to make a plan for the afternoon. We were looking online for tickets to the cathedral. Unfortunately, the dome and the bell tower were already sold out. So as I read online just now, it's recommended to book in advance if you want to be able to walk up all the steps to get the best views. But we found one ticket where we can check out the museum and the baptistery and things like that. So we booked that for 3 p.m. So we're gonna go have some ice cream and some lunch and head back to the cathedral around that time. All right, we'll be back. We'll talk to you after we've had gelato. <laughs> so one of the things that Emma planned for our Florence visit is to go to one of the oldest ice cream shops in the city. Apparently you get your ice cream through a little hole in the wall and there seems to be a bit of a crowd around. So we're gonna check this out. <laughs> Yeah, go for it. Which one? Yeah. Now pass it through the little window. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Thank you. Buongiorno. <laughs> what flavour did you get? I got pear and caramel. And I got hazelnut. 
my favorite. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's like it's really come now. So we found a really cute little cafe sandwich shop. It was really popular, so we decided to stop in on our walk after the gelato. It was really busy at the start. Now I've got the upstairs seating area to myself, but Emma's waiting for our sandwiches. We're gonna have a bite to eat. Hello. <laughs> Apparently it's a lucky ball. Rub it now and put some money into it for good luck. The reality of the lucky ball. <laughs> so much luck. Yeah, yeah. Your turn. Right, go, 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 go for gold. Okay, <laughs> go. <laughs> right, Lewis, you've got to be next. Just go. Thousand euro coin. Bore off. So where is our uh, cultural tour of Florence taking us? Just to Brandy Melville's shop. Looks like you get a Florence shop. Different kind of uh, golden arches. Not McDonald's. <laughs> so, what have you been your impressions and thoughts of Florence so far then? Yeah, I mean, it's really beautiful, like the architecture and um, the scenery and everything is just so lovely, just super busy, way busier than it is in Pisa, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a lot bigger than Pisa as well. Yeah. And there's lots to do in the city, so you won't get bored here. But it does seem very like designery and like upmarket. Yeah. Yeah, that part's kind of weird because everywhere you look is like beautiful old architecture and super like romantic. And then all of the, the shops like Dior and Berber and stuff just have all of their stores in these beautiful old buildings so it's kind of a bit of a contrast but it's kind of interesting we're enjoying it and we're going to head back to the cathedral probably the main thing to do so check it out yeah this one is a cool stop on our way to the cathedral it's the piazza della signoria where you've got a free art gallery you can go and see some of these cool statues they're mainly violent and or abusive but uh <laughs> <laughs> but the gallery is free uh, so it's a good place to check out. We're in the crypt under the cathedral, Santa Reparata. Do you think the cathedral in Pisa was more impressive? Yeah, the outside of this one's really nice, but the inside is a bit disappointing compared to the outside, I'd say. I agree, the outside is really impressive and it's got all the different buildings like the bell tower and of course the dome that maybe would be the recommended ones to do. It's still very nice and ornate, super high ceilings and I see a beautiful mural on the roof of the dome, but maybe not as impressive as the one in Pisa. So we just got out of the cathedral, which we could visit with our Santa Reparata tickets and the queue behind me is just as long as it was at the start that's just to get into the cathedral that was included with our ticket so it's just stationary now no one's moving and no one knows what's going on so i would recommend getting some tickets so you can just get in there without waiting it's a bit of a bummer because the main feature of this like baptistry is the mosaic at the top but sadly it's being under construction at the minute so we can't actually see it in its full glory so we can just see it with some Scaffolding. Yeah, I think it's restoration. 
So this is the last activity included on our ticket is the museum. We're feeling pretty exhausted <laughs> by now. So we're gonna go take a look at some of the exhibits. There's some good viewpoints and a movie room in here. So we'll go check those out before heading back home to Pisa. <laughs> lost in class. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so many things to see today. What do you think of the museum? Yeah, I mean, there was a lot to see to be fair and you could spend a whole day there. There were loads of rooms, three floors and a really cool view at the top. Mm -hmm. But I think we weren't really feeling it after walking around the cathedral, the crypt and also the Baptist baptistery 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 <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean is it a place that you get baptized or you become know. a baptizer Maybe. that's unclear <laughs> anyway it, it was fun like that's probably definitely the main thing to do in florence to go to that complex we bought the ticket that included the baptistery the museum and the first thing was to go to the crypt what was the name santo don't ask me. <laughs> I said it earlier in the vlog because I remembered it definitely. Um, and that was decent. We booked our tickets late so we couldn't do the dome or the bell tower. And I would say really they take a long time and it's so tiring. So if you're going to Florence to do those things, pick the two kind of activities that you want to do. I think for most people that would be the dome and the bell tower and probably aim and budget to just do those two things because if you buy the full ticket that's like 30 euros, you have five attractions you can go to i think you'll just be too tired you won't get through all of them and be that happy so yeah choose your favorite too and buy the ticket for that i reckon yeah or spread it out like in the whole week or however long you're staying there but we only had a day so that's why we crammed in as much as possible mm -hmm. that, that is a good thought that actually the tickets that you buy are valid for three days so if you're staying in florence you could buy the big ticket and do it over two or three days we only had the eight hours in florence so we couldn't take advantage of that so much but Got to run, get our train back to Pisa, so yeah. back to the station. So we're staying at B&B Relay Paradise in Pisa, so let's have a look around. I must never notice these pizza leaflets in the, <laughs> in the lobby. So welcome to our humble abode. And it's very humble. It's quite small. It's basically just a bed. There is a telly um, and there is a little wardrobe and of course an ensuite. The bed is really big, which is nice, but the pillows are super hard. So actually we've not really been sleeping on them. We're using like the duvet <laughs> to sleep on because we both like flat pillows. <laughs> and here is our little ensuite. We've got obviously a walk-in shower, toilet and um, bidet. <laughs> sink over here and a window and yeah it's all right i think we paid around 500 dollars in total for four nights and that comes with breakfast as well so it's not the cheapest but it's a good location because it's only 10 minutes walk to the tower and into the center so yeah we would recommend we'll link it below if you're interested in staying we're looking very black tonight <laughs> <laughs> i am wearing gray <laughs> i'm not <laughs> So after a quick rest back in the room, we are heading out for dinner. And this trip's been kind of a bit special because it was Emma's birthday last week. So it's kind of a little birthday treat, isn't it? Yeah, looking forward to it. I've chosen a pizza place. Obviously we're in Italy, so it's a must. Yeah, we're gonna finally have some Italian pizza in Italy. So I'm very excited for that. Yeah, it's pizza in Pisa. Good, yeah, yeah, Pisa pizza. <laughs> That is a big pizza. Yeah. <laughs> we ordered the biggest pizza on the menu. It was a bit of a faff trying to order it and wait 45 minutes, but looks good. Mmm, mm. pizza and pizza. How is it? It's good. Yeah, the toppings are really nice. They're really fresh and flavorful. I would say the, the bottom is a little bit soggy. So not so, doesn't, doesn't uh, pass the flop test so much and we did have to wait quite a long time. We ordered the big pizza which I said was for two people and I'd say it's probably overall less than ordering two small pizzas so maybe not the best value but it was a nice big piece to share and uh, it's good to have pizza in pizza. We might have to get some dessert from the place across the street next. <laughs> And to finish the night off, we're having dessert, of course. So we just went literally next door to the gelato place and we got a 
pistachio cannoli. Can 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 <laughs> and a little pot of salted caramel ice cream and biscuit and cream tiramisu thing. Mm. Yummy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lucas train seen better days. Luca. It's sunny in Luca. What you doing? White boy task number one. Sun pretty much. <laughs> Back to 30. <laughs> Alrighty, so we arrived in Luca, only about 30 minutes away from Pisa on the train. We have a bit more of a fluid plan for today, not such an itinerary. We just have a few things that we think look cool that we're gonna try and stop off on. There's a little aqueduct, there's some other cathedrals, and there's more city walls. Every city seems to be walled in Northern Italy. So we're on our way to our first one, just check it out, see what Luca's like. Yeah, so far it's, it's pretty pleasant, it's not so busy, quiet and very green, which is nice. Yeah, that does seem nice, and not too hot actually, I think we got a bit lucky, it's a bit of a cooler day, so uh, let's enjoy and explore. Well, we said it was a walled city and within two minutes inside the main gate, then we can walk up a few steps, walk along the city wall, which is pretty nice. A little bit shaded, some nice trees. Avoid the cyclists. <laughs> <That's so fine. laughs> so then, first impressions of Luca versus Florence, Pisa. Yeah, it seems super chilled here already and there's loads of cute little cafes, restaurants, bars, a few shops and the buildings are obviously really beautiful. And mm. Architecture is really nice. I just get a good vibe from here. What about you? Yeah, it definitely seems a lot more chill compared to Florence, which was crazy touristy and and busy. But still, yeah, nice vibes. A bit more peaceful. It's nice to just wander around and have a bit more space to breathe. Yeah, I think we've arrived in the plaza, one of many. Mhm. Mm Napoleon Plaza. We're walking through the beautifully sunny first plaza of the tour. I've identified the next four stops on our walking tour. We're gonna to check out the Luca Cathedral just down this road and then two towers. Can't get enough of the towers. And then gelato. <laughs> A must do for Emma in every city, especially in Italy. So we just checked out the cathedral behind me, we decided to buy tickets, a combined ticket which allows access to most of the monuments and attractions in this area was only 10 euros. So we started with the cathedral and we're just about to do the climb to the bell tower, <laughs> bell tower climb, around a bit over 200 steps, 230 stairs for the bell tower. I'm feeling it in the calves already, it's not a good sign. top of the bell tower, only around 230 stairs. I'm a little bit more out of breath than I should be, but we did walk quite quickly. It's nice to get a really good view, panoramic all the way around, and they've got these good signs that tell you all the landmarks that you can see, but I think it might be a gelato time for a little bit of a break. Top of the tower. Ding dong. So now we're in the church. It is very beautiful and impressive. It's not, it's not a thousand percent different from the other ones, is it? Dead quiet down here. So we've gone under the main base of the church and all the documentation is pretty good actually. It tells you all the different phases of construction from the Roman period in different centuries. You can see all the different layers of construction. What's that? Yeah. 
So that last church was cool. I thought the underground walkway section was a bit more interesting than the above ground church, which seems quite similar to quite a few others that we've seen even on this trip. So we're heading back to our first plaza. We might find gelato or time to go get some lunch. Take a little break, it's really hot too. Tell, us about, tell us about this place. So you choose your cup or cone and then you actually like do that, serve the ice cream yourself. Um, yeah, you can add toppings and then they, um, you pay by the weight. It's kind of cool. Oh, God. Yeah. It's already a lot. Oh. Any toppings? It's 368. Okay. It's melting. Sandwich time! Mm. Which one you got? I got tuna with some um, cheese and tomato and meat. Yeah. And I went for a ham and salad. Which is nice, they're about 5 euros, 5 euros 50 for the sandwich. Yep. A little hole in the wall place, takeaway only, so we're just chilling on the bench in the shade. Nice. Enjoy. Yeah, the bread looks really thick, so... Thicky. <laughs> bon appetit. Enjoy. So we just stopped for a coffee in the middle of another one of these plazas. This one is special because it used to be a Roman amphitheatre, which is not still standing, but you can see from the oval shape of all the buildings behind me, the legacy of that amphitheatre. And we had a coffee at one of these places, a really nice one. And we're gonna go on a bit further now towards the city wall. We've gone for a quick stroll outside of the city limits. Over to my left, we're walking alongside the city wall, which is really nice. And we're about to take a route back into the city and we're going to walk up on the wall just for a little bit more we've got a couple of hours before our train home and we're feeling not too too tired so just slow walking it around the bottle <laughs> you can take a quick bath too just the water for now i think I think we're feeling pretty burned out now. We've done a lot of walking, we've seen all the sites that we want to, and we've still got about 45 minutes till our train. So we're just sitting on a bench, resting. <laughs> With a fan <laughs> salon. Yeah. So, what do you think? Overall impressions of Luca? Is it a not to miss or a skip? I really enjoyed it. I mean, personally, I would suggest coming here if you have time. And we found a day was you know, perfect for, for us. I mean, obviously there's always more you can do, but I think if you just want to get a feel for the place, uh, have a nice chilled time, then Luke is the one for you, really. Mm -hmm. No, I think, and we had about like seven, eight hours here, and I think that was a good amount of time. Compared to the day that we spent in Florence yesterday, that was, you know, a lot more hectic, a lot more busy, and Luca, we kind of said it suits us as a bit of a retirement, sleepy kind of city vibe, which I think is nice for a break if you're, you know, just in hectic, even more touristy places. So that's been really nice. It's still got a lot of history, beautiful buildings, and it's pretty small. You can walk from one side to the other of the city walls within 40 minutes to an hour, depending on which side you're going from. And I think that's nice. Uh, makes it kind of seem manageable and uh, you can just walk around most places. But like us, you might get a bit tired after six or seven hours. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, it's about half an hour from Pisa or an hour on the train-ish from Florence. So if you have time, I think it's a nice little detour. Yeah, for sure. Would recommend. Good. All right. Haven't seen a squatty potty for a long time since we were in Asia. But Luca Station, not really the one. Only if you're desperate. Welcome back to Pisa. We are walking on our way to dinner and we know that we're in Pisa because we're passing. <laughs> We're passing the Leaning Tower on our walk to dinner, which is not the worst commute. Not that you commute to dinner, but <laughs> journey. it's not the worst journey to dinner we've ever had, so this is pretty cool. It looks beautiful at this time of day, and it's not that, that busy. Yeah, it would be a good time to go up now. I mean, that's why there's still a fair amount of people waiting, but yeah. a bit cooler too, so I'm sure it's nice for you. Yeah, sunset would be really nice. Oh, 
7.30 at night and there's still so many people here. I just said it's not that busy. <laughs> oh. It isn't as busy as it usually is. Not as busy during the daytime, but 7.30, it's still pretty busy for Leaning Tower of Pisa. Do your best impression. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the knock you've been waiting for. <laughs> Breakfast time. Yummy. Good morning. It's our last day here in Italy and we just checked out of our hotel. And one thing to know about staying in Pisa is there is a city tax that is one euro fifty per person per night. So we were two people staying here four nights, so we had to pay 12 euros. And we don't have any cash, we had to pay it in cash, so we're just going to the ATM to get the last cash to pay city tax. And then we're off to Pisa City Walls for walling it up. Yeah, thank you. It cost us bloody six euros fifty online. On the window it says five euros per person. So for the wall of Pisa, don't book online. <laughs> Unless you want to spend money. Yeah. If you like spending more than it costs, book online. <laughs> So we are on top of the wall of Pisa, which is really nice. It does give a really good view, plus to escape all those crowds and to see the tower and the complex behind us. So it's a cool walk, but not literally. It is scorching hot. There is almost zero shade. So we're uh, going to have to get a bit of shade during the trip. And the next section of the wall is about 1600 meters, so a kilometer and a half. Going to have to take a bit of a break before that, I think. Taking one last walk around the main shopping street just north of Pisa Central, the main train station, and not too far from the airport either, with all the designer shops and really cute buildings and super hot and sunny with sun directly overhead. Feeling pretty exhausted. We just popped into HM for a second time after I got my underwear here last time. It's actually one of the most beautiful HMs I've ever been into. In this beautiful old building, bit of a funny layout, all little connecting rooms, but wow, it's like you're walking around one of the many museums of Pisa. So we're buying our last bus tickets and Pisa Mover, which is a shuttle to get from Pisa Central Station to the airport, which we're going to use in a few hours. We're going to pre-buy them now, so we're not in a rush later. Platform 13 from Pisa Station. What you got there? The last gelato of the trip. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Does it taste good? <laughs> good, I went for something new with melon and then pesca. Peach. Mm, very nice. Classic, and you? I got pistachio and hazelnut, although it's kind of melted into one. A bit mucky. <laughs> Emma's more of a nutty kind of gelato girl, as well as gelato fan. And I'm more of a fruity kind of guy. <laughs> So that last gelato wraps up our time here in Tuscany, Italy. We had a really good time checking out three amazing, historical, beautiful cities. And of course, having a lot of gelatos and amazing food along the way. So if you enjoyed the video or you found it informative, please give it a like. And don't forget to comment down below what your favorite part of our trip was and subscribe for more videos and to see where are we going next. <laughs> cool, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. See ya. Bye. Bye.